General Harold Burton and Colonel Marlowe, sir. Steve, come in. Hello, Sam. Colonel Marlowe. Hi, Cap. Donald Steve Jellicoe. General Sherman, Colonel Marlowe. How do you do, sir? Colonel. Marlowe, I have been anxious to meet you. Sit down. Privilege, sir. Sit down. Your first look at Vicksburg, Marlowe? Yes, sir. We've been looking at it for 10 months, and we don't like it. Colonel, for your benefit, the war on our side hasn't been going well at all. Not in Washington, not in the newspapers, not in the field. To put it mildly, with less men and less resources, the South has whipped us to a standstill. Now, if I could take Vicksburg, the whole picture would change. But I'd have to do it this summer. Or sit out here another year, which might cost us a hundred thousand men, might cost us the war. Which brings all this talk down to their main source of supply, and a thorn in our side. Newton Station. Sam, Marlowe has worked out the details of your plan pretty thoroughly. Let's hear them. Well, if I could get back to LaGrange right away, we could leave by Thursday. Good. Who would your people be? My own first Illinois, along with Secor's first Michigan, and Blaney's second Iowa. We'd be called down to a short brigade. Cross at LaGrange, down through Ripley, New Albany, Houston. Is there something wrong, sir? I know the map, Colonel. Proceed. Well, anyway, the main trick is no fighting until we hit Newton Station. How much track you figure to destroy it? As much as I can get my hands on. At least enough to keep him busy for a couple of months rebuilding. Otherwise, the raid would just be another horse ride. All right, Colonel, go ahead. All the rails, ties, buildings, bridges, all the rolling stock you can get your hands on. Sam, even if he should manage to get through to Newton Station, he'd be 300 miles dead center in the Confederacy. Have you thought how you'd get back? Have you, sir? Well, I guess I asked for that. But then I hate to think of you sitting it out in Andersonville prison. It's a hellhole. I think about that twice, too, sir. Well, Colonel, your success. All right, here is LaGrange. We will make 35 miles a day average. 35? 35? 35. Isn't that stretching it a bit? It will be the first day, Ned. I intend to make twice that distance. An operation like this, everything is stretched, even our necks. Now, now, just hold on a minute, John. Regarding cutting the men's rations from five days to three, you can't expect men. We'll have to live off the land eventually. They might as well get used to it while they're fresh. They actually seem excited. There's a rumor around camp that they're headed for Nashville in a parade. I thought that was a good rumor to spread, with the help of the sergeant major. Thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen, I'll have to admit they had me fooled, too. <laughs> you see, uh, I was going to use my leave to do a little electioneering back home. So, you know, uh, shake a few hands, kiss a few babies. You see, uh, I'm running for Congress this fall. Well, there's 30,000 votes at Andersonville, Phil. I hope you don't get to shake any of their hands. Leaves are being canceled, orders to reshoe the whole blasted outfit, and some of them shoes ain't even shiny yet. Well, I'm trying to figure out what's up. Big Bray's been sitting under that tree all the morning. I heard some scuttlebutt about us being pulled out for a big parade up north. I figure we're heading for Nashville. That's to my liking. Parade and then leave. Now this war's starting to shape up. Where's the officers' conference? Uh, over under that tree yonder, sir. Thank you. My apologies for being late, General. Understood. Sit down, Major. I don't believe I know the Major. Oh, I'm sorry. Colonel Marlowe, Major Kendall. How do you do, sir? Glad to know you, sir. Major Kendall has just been assigned to us from General Grant's headquarters. 
The Major seems to be out of uniform. Where are your sidearms, Kendall? If you look in the book, sir, you'll see that the surgeon doesn't carry them. Surgeon? You cut out our artillery, you cut out our wagons, nothing to slow us down, and now you saddle us with a doctor and a medical unit? Regulations, John. Kendall goes along. Very well, sir. Any questions? Oh, I can see it's time tonight for some action. We no have... glory hunting, Richard. Anything knock this into a cockpit, it'll be a firefight. Is that all, sir? Uh, one thing. Falcon, is Brady ready? Yes, sir. Oh, a photograph. You know, General, I'm running at the right, photograph. Right. Right. Move away, move away. Move back. All right, man. You ready for us, Brady? All right, all right. 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 All right, no hats, please, gentlemen. Oh. That's right. Nice and relaxed. Now, roses are red, violets are blue. The camera is looking straight at you. Oh, I must have another one. That man in the white coat moved. I must that have another one. That isn't all. He'll be moving before long. Sorry, General. Is that all? That's all, gentlemen. Thank you, Candle. Freddy. All right, man. Oh, thank, thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Move on. Sit down. 